So we're here at the Tank Museum down in Bovington, over the road from the British Army's Armour Centre, and I'm here with Lee Fellows and Marcus Bruton, who are Warrior Capability Sustainment Programme Directors uh, from Lockheed Martin and DNS respectively. Uh, so, Warrior Capability Sustainment Programme, sustainment, the S, would suggest uh, maintaining parity, would suggest that we're, we're keeping um, sort of keeping things status quo, but I think actually when you look at the vehicle there's quite a radical in increase in capability on this platform. So Lee, if you could give us a, an overview of what's changed, what's new, and particularly any new capabilities. Sure. Well fundamentally this is about transforming the capability of the current Warrior product. We've improved the situational awareness around the vehicle, so there are far more sensors, they're digital rather than analogue, and particularly for the infantryman when he comes out of the vehicle he's got a far better appreciation of where the battle is and how he needs to come out safely and to prosecute his job. So as you can see there's a 40mm cannon, uh, it's not just the punch that's delivered by the weapon itself, uh, this vehicle is capable of automated fire on the move, so that means that it's both a stabilised cannon, so it's got a far better chance of hitting the target, but also because it's got automated controls, it's got correction of fire, it's also got the ability to, to select different natures depending on the threat. And then finally on top of that, it's got survivability benefits as well, so they're all the um, armour benefits that you'd expect from a modern fighting vehicle. Fantastic, thank you. And so, Marcus, if we could flip that sort of same question, but to the user sort of point of view. So what sort of actual capabilities is this bringing to the guys who are going to be using the equipment? So I think I need to be slightly careful in terms of, obviously, I'm the DNS, so I'm not going to speak on behalf of the Army. However, um, what it does do is, as Lee rightly said, you know, you've got a significantly more lethal um, cannon here. Firing on the move, absolutely critical capability. So in terms of sustainment, what it actually means is we can sustain the capability we've got here way beyond the current out-of-service date um, and uh, deliver this capability into the future. In terms of, of future growth, sustainment of that platform, um, Lee, could you speak perhaps a bit to what growth potential there is in the platform to sort of keep it going for presumably a couple of decades to come because we don't have a warrior replacement uh, on the cards just yet? We're very much driven by requirements in Lockheed Martin. Um, we're here to make sure that what we've designed meets what we've been contracted for. There is a growth requirement that we are contracted for. I can't tell you what that is. Um, and obviously, as the MOD decide that they want to put additional capabilities on, then we've got the provision to do that if where possible. I can't tell you what those are because that's for the MOD to decide when they want to use them. Mark, similarly, I imagine you're going to have a, a similar answer, but are there any, any emerging technologies or, uh, or, or other capabilities that you have an eye on as they mature or otherwise? Okay, so again, um, I'm in DNS, so I'm not going to comment on uh, future capabilities. But what I would say is that what you've got here is a 21st century system. Um, you've got a 21st century architecture. So in terms of data handling, you've got 21st century. You know, so I can keep on emphasizing the 21st century, but you've certainly got a massive step change in the data handling capability of this system. So you can draw your own conclusions in terms of growth. Sure, absolutely. And so in terms of that, that massive step change, and the Canon again is, a, is an item that's going to be a, a serious step change for the, for the operators of the platform, what sort of work is, is, is DNS or is the Army looking at with regards to how we're going to train the future crews for this vehicle? Because looking at the, sort of the, the, the relatively more basic Raden Canon, this has a, a, a much wider range of munition natures, it has a, you know, many of them programmable. Um, is that a challenge that they're going to face? And particularly I'm thinking sort of culturally, the way they've got used to fighting this vehicle, it's almost a completely new vehicle and they'll have to really retrain on that. Um, I think, you know, from the outset you'll probably say, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously um, a step change in capability which would require you know, a more intensive training, but certainly what we've found at the moment in the trials is it's not as big a hurdle as we think it is. And, you know, the crews have taken to it like a duck to water. It's been really, really impressive. So we've got a load of RAT troops here um, who are over in uh, Bovington and in the ATDU, and they're absolutely taking it. So I think we've got six mod crews, is it? Or, or, so there's a huge, huge uptake. So I don't think it is as big a leap we have we have specifically designed this and it's a it's a piece we've been working for many years to make this something that is intuitive to use in the middle of a conflict it's not the time to be working out how to get this to work you need to know when you get in the vehicle you need to be able to go 
so we make sure. and presumably there's a case of, of many of the users probably weren't born when warrior first came into service so if anything this is going to be more intuitive to them than the original vehicle is yeah absolutely no absolutely um i think i think that's exactly right you um this is this is designed for that generation so looking to the uh, immediate future what are sort of the major milestones events and other sort of uh, targets that you guys have from your respective positions as the manufacturer and the buyer so there's a really significant milestone coming up in the next couple of weeks. We're going to enter something called reliability growth trials. And fundamentally, that's about giving our customer the confidence that our product works. We've designed it. We've spent a lot of effort making sure it's good. We've done shakedown trials. We've done de-risks. We've done various trials over the last few years. We're now at the bit where we're going to demonstrate that we've got a quality product. So in two to three weeks' time, we will enter that trial. It will take a year and a half approximately. And at the end of that, we'll demonstrate we've got compliant products product that is both quality and compliant to what we've committed to. Thanks, thank you. And Mark, anything from your point of view to add? Um, it's the same. Um, RGT, reliability growth trials, is a critical activity on any uh, vehicle programme and um, this is the ability now to see what we've got and you know, how much it meets the Army's requirement and go forward with it. I think it's a really critical juncture and um, I think we're both looking forward to it actually because to date we've had six battlefield missions I think so these are shakedown battlefield missions um, and they're going on target so I think you know this is a really good exciting time I think future decisions they're based on what happens from now onwards really sure. fantastic well thank you both very much